overflows. Life evolves out of death. Transformation is possible only when you are firmly determined to work against all narrownesses, conditionings and belief system. Transformation is possible only when you are firmly determined to work against all narrownesses, conditionings and belief system. Only then your consciousness will evolve, blossom to reach the new heights. Verily, life evolves out of death. Death is the seed of life. You have lived a life before and then died in that life. Death is the seed out of which your present life evolved. To this, there are two approaches. The approach of Gautam Buddha, which is life negative, and Tantra approach of life positive. Basically, these are two approaches and both evolve out of death. You can look at death as negative or positive. This is individual approach. But to allow life to evolve of life negative approach, only Gautam Buddha could do. So too, to evolve life out of life positive approach, only Tantra could do. You have to understand being life negative or life positive are individual approaches to life. However, to evolve life out of that approach, it's something different. To evolve life out of that approach is something different. Buddha is not really life negative. He appears as if he is life negative because he focuses on death. By focusing or starting the journey or hypothesis from the rise of death cannot meet cannot mean Buddha is life negative. To us, he appears to be in love with death, but he is not. On the contrary, he is in love with life eternal. To find that life which is deathless, beyond death, he focuses on death. Death is not his love. He has to focus on death just to find out something which is beyond death, that is eternal life, that is never born, never dies. And Buddha says that if there is nothing beyond death, then life is futile. But only then is life futile? What is beyond death? What is beyond death is life eternal. He never says life is futile. He says if nothing is beyond death, only then life is futile. And your life is futile because your life is not beyond death. You have not experienced in life that is never born, never dies. Whatsoever you think is your life is a part of death. That will discover, that will disappear like a soap bubble. You are fooled by that. You think a soap bubble, that a soap bubble is life 
and remember it is nothing but death on its way. A man is born one day and another day he will die. Really he is not. He is on his way to die. Whatsoever he becomes, whatsoever he achieves, possesses, nothing will help. He is moving constantly towards death. This so-called life is moving towards death. How can we call it death? That is Buddha's question. A life which moves towards death, how can be it be called life? Life which implies death inevitably is just hidden death, not life. It is gradual death. By and by you are dying and you go on thinking that you are living. Right now you feel you are living, but you are not, but are you not dying each moment? Every moment you are losing life and gaining death. A tree is known by its fruits, Buddha says. So, your tree of life cannot be called life because death is the fruit. A tree is known by its fruit and if on your tree of life only fruits of death grow, come, then you were deceived by the tree. And another thing, if a tree gives a particular fruit, it shows that particular fruit was the fruit of, was the seed of the tree. Otherwise, that particular fruit could not come out of that tree. So if life gives you the fruit of death, death must have been the seed of life. Let us understand this. You are born one day and you think that birth is the beginning. Really it is not. Before the birth, you died in another life. That death became the seed for the present life, present birth and the life. That seed, that death was the seed of this birth and then again death will come, will become the fruit. At the end of the life, the death will happen. That fruit will become the seed for another birth. Birth leads to death. So also death precedes birth. So if you want to see life as it really is, it is rounded on both the sides of death. Death is the beginning of life and death again is the end. And life is just an illusion in between two poles of death. You feel a life between two shores of death. The passage joining one death to another you call life. Buddha says this is not life. This is life of pain, misery and suffering. This life is death. That is why he appears to us who are deeply life hypnotized, obsessed about being alive in any way as life negative to us. Just to be alive seems to be the end. We are so much afraid of death that Buddha appears in love with death. 
and that looks abnormal. He seems to be suicidal. This is what many have criticized Buddha for. Albert Schutz has criticized Buddha because he feels Buddha is obsessed with death. In reality, Buddha is not obsessed with death. Instead, we are obsessed with life. We are obsessed with life and Buddha wants to break this monotony. He is simply analyzing things to find out what are the facts. And the deeper you go, the more you will find he is right. Your life is just false, fake, overtaken by death, just a clothing, an outer covering. Inside there is death, there is fear, there is pain, there is suffering. Buddha focuses on death because he says, if I can find out what death is, only then I can find out what life is. And if I can know both death and life, then there is possibility that I may transcend both and know something which is beyond both birth and death. Beyond both, Buddha is not life negative, not life denying, instead as he appears to be. He is looking what is life eternal and his focus is on life evolving out of life, not life evolving out of death. One life you have died, out of that seed a new life begins. Enough for now.